Kyrie going to roll the pocket to the left on first down, throw to the left sideline, jump ball, Mason Shrek. There's a battle for the football. Who's got it? I believe Shrek has got it. Tolls in the shotgun, gets the snap, stands in the pocket, gets pressured, hit, ball's loose, and the Bulls have recovered at the 10-yard line. We'll go do one, two, oh. And we welcome in Bulls head coach Lance Leipold to get everybody ready and talk an awful lot about homecoming, start of the MAC, big game against Kent State. Coach, there's no question when you start the MAC schedule, there is a little bit of a flip of the switch that goes on. How much do you talk to your team about the significance of this part of the schedule? Well, we, we talk about it in our opening meeting of, of MAC play is because it's starting over. Everybody's back at, at zero and zero. Uh, non-conference is important in development, but at the same time, this is where it really counts. Well, we assume that the weather's going to be good, so there shouldn't be any issues with Kent State getting here for today's mm. game. Um, but it starts the Mid-American Conference schedule against a pretty good rival of yours, and they are coming off maybe one of their more impressive games in the last couple of years, even though it didn't end up in a win. They wind up losing with 20 seconds to go to Akron by three, but a lot of good things happen for Kent yeah. State. Did you see some things in those game tapes that, that maybe opened your eyes a little bit yeah it was a great game for for both teams a battle a rival game for the two schools and it went right down to the wire and you can see them gain confidence you know they had a very challenging non-conference schedule with you know Penn State and Alabama as two of those four games and I think they they were you know excited for that rival game right out the right out of the gate and uh, and I think they're going to probably be ready to, to bounce back for that here so it'll be a challenge they they started their third quarterback of the year in Nick Holly. he mm -hmm. had been a running back he he had been a wide receiver. They appeared to keep it a pretty good secret because Akron was not ready for him at quarterback, and he winds up ripping off 285 yards passing, 117 yards rushing. Matter of fact, the first Kent State quarterback to have over 100 rushing and passing since Julian Edelman, a name that mm -hmm. fans will be familiar with. Matter of fact, Edelman did it right here against UB back in 2008. So the element of surprise is gone with Nick Holly at quarterback as you begin to prepare, but but how do you now evaluate what they're going to try to do with him? Well, you have to take what they did against Akron and, uh, of course, uh, you know, work your schemes to that. And then th the next question is, what are they going to add to that part of the offense? Uh, and, and they had, you know, one week's time to get ready for that. They'll add to it. And then you still have to be ready for any of the other quarterbacks that have played and helped their team move this year, move the ball, uh, get ready for them. So it'll be a good challenge for our defense. Speaking of defense, Kent State's always had a good defense. They, they've been effective all year. Year long they come in with a leading tackler in the Mac in Nate Holly the quarterback's brother they come in with a leading sacker in the Mac and Terrence Waugh uh, I think when we think of Kent State we always kind of think of defense first yeah, I think in the Paul Haynes era, he's a defensive coach in, in his assistant days. They, they do a great job defensively, uh, very aggressive. Last year was a very tight ball game. Um, they've, they've searched for offensive identity, and I, I think that's uh, they're starting to find it. And, uh, but I think when you go back to what they've been about is uh, you know winning games with tough defense, and uh, it'll be a challenge for us. Well, Lance mentioned uh, Paul Haynes, the head coach of the Kent State Golden Flashes. He wants his team to be a defensively tough-oriented the team that's the goal he has for his players I think it always you talk about blue collar tough hard nose uh, football that's what we've been about ever since I played and put on the blue and gold uh, and I don't think that would ever change we obviously have the same goal as everybody else same expectation as everybody else going into the season that's to win a MAC championship and be back here in, in December kind of our focus this year is we came up with a term it's called Ubuntu and that's basically meaning we are what we are because of all of us, because of who we are it's collectively. Um, and I can't be me without all of us. Um, so that's, that's kind of who we are and that's what we are going to be this season. Talking about, again, our, our better players are our better leaders. And any time that you have your better players that are your better leaders and hardest workers, you have a chance. And when you look at Nate, you look at Demetrius Monday, you look at Terrence Wah, those those guys fit that mold. Uh, so, you know, a great leader makes people good or better around them, you know, also too. So, and that's what we expect those guys to do.
Those comments from Holly and Haynes came at Mac Media Day earlier this summer in Detroit. Coach, what's your reaction to some of the things that Coach Haynes had to say? Well, not overly surprising. You know, Coach Haynes has been that defensive coach that we talked about. It's his fourth year. He has experienced players that have been with him for a while now. And he, and that message is kind of ringing through the ranks. And, uh, again, I, I think everything they're talking about is going to be that part of that challenge for us here today. All right, well, this has been our town BMW game preview segment. We got you ready for the Bulls and the Kent State Golden Flash. 3.30 kickoff later today at UB Stadium. Eddie Money takes the Stampede Square concert stage at 1.30. And we want to remind you, coming up on Friday, we're going to flip the sports calendar a little bit to basketball as the Bulls are going to celebrate the men's and women's MAC championships with Bulls Madness here at Alumni Arena. And that starts Friday night at 7 o'clock. Coming up next on UB Football Insider, we're going to introduce you to one of the bright spots, the new bright spots on the Bulls defense. That's next when we return to UB Football Insider. Country music duo Brothers Osborne will take the stage inside Stampede Square on Saturday, October 15th. Then stay a little longer and catch the UB football team as they're set to host Ball State. Presented by game day sponsor Tim Hortons. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the fun starts at 12.30 p.m. It's a fun-filled day the whole family is sure to enjoy. For tickets, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. This segment of UB Football Insider with Lance Leipold is brought to you by CEFQ. For all your banking, insurance, and investment needs, visit your local branch or go to CEFQ.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. My name is Paul Peck. One of the emerging stars on the Bulls defense is linebacker Ishmael Hargrove. He's second on the team in tackles, leads the Bulls in sacks. He actually leads the Mid-American Conference in both forced fumbles and fumble recoveries. And as you'll learn in this week's CEFQ player profile, Ishmael learned a valuable lesson that sometimes you just have to wait your turn. I'm Ishmael Hargrove. I'm a junior linebacker on the UB football team. Shotgun snap, Sussman in the pocket, rushed, hit, and sacked. Ripped down to the turf by Ishmael Hargrove. His first career UB sack. Football is just a passionate sport, and you know, I don't think everybody has that passion for the game, which is it takes a lot out of you. And so, in order for you to compete uh, the way you want to compete at, you have to have that that will in you and that, that that fight in you to you know push forward and push through adversity, and also push with your brothers beside you. Throughout my high school on the offensive side, I played receiver, and then on the defense side, I was actually just moving around. Um, I played safety a little bit. I played a little bit linebacker. Coming to UB, I just I like the atmosphere. The coaches, they were they were welcoming. I think the thing that kind of sold me was, you know, I came with my parents and they kind of took us in and then showed us, you know, kind of some one-on-one -on -one time. That kind of not only influenced me, but my parents too felt that this was going to be a good fit for me. My major is speech and hearing science. I want to be able to, you know, work with, you know, people in the medical field, uh, issues they have, you know, speaking issues, hearing issues. I want to be able to work with them. My mom and my dad, they used to run a group home when I was younger. And in there, it was a few people that, you know, was, uh, was deaf. And so I felt that that was something that interested me a lot. And I felt that I could be able to adapt to that and be able to build on that and use one of those talents for me to, to give back to the people. Well, Ish has done a great job. He, you know, he really progressed throughout the spring and that's carried over into to fall camp. Um, he was a guy that had a, lot, had, a, had a major backup role, was a lot of special teams uh, previously in years past, and this year's really stepped up to the plate and been a major contributor on defense uh, as that field backer. Knowing that, you know, a lot of guys from the linebacker spot especially graduated, Okazi, Gilbo, Pizanka, a lot of those guys leaving, you know, I know that it was a perfect opportunity, not only me, but a lot of other guys to step up as well. So coming in the spring, you know, I made a mindset in my head that I was going to be one of those guys to step up and, you know, thanks to Last year, we were able to learn the defense and adapt to everything. It, it flowed a lot easier for me coming in this year. We're all brothers, you know. We're all together on this. Um, I feel that, that I can help push them, those guys, as well as them pushing me to, to get to where we need to get to. In order to do that, I feel that we have to help each other out. When we dig deep and we play together, we, you know, we can do anything. Coach, you've said before that Ishmael Hargrove was one of the biggest surprises on your team from last year to this year. Tell us why and tell us what he did to make himself uh, such a big surprise. I think, Paul, one of the things that caught my eye when I mean surprise is how quickly he started to play with confidence in the spring. 
Um, from early on, I think he saw the opportunity. Sometimes it's a matter of just confidence that, hey, I'm out there with the first group. And, and I think he took that and he, and he really started to build on it, his confidence. Everything started to click a little bit more, understanding what he needed to do. And, he, and he's really never looked back. Every player, and, it, and we kind of live in a world now where everything has to happen right yeah. <laughs> away and right that. Ishmael's an excellent uh, uh, you know, example of there are benefits to sometimes watching and learning and waiting a little bit of your turn because he's obviously taken that waiting part and turned it into the fact that he's among the leaders in the conference in a number of defensive categories. Yeah, it's a fine, it's a fine line and a balance, Paul, because you want guys to be competitive. You want them to keep striving to get on the field, but then they have to be willing to accept the role at the time but not be satisfied with it. And I think uh, Ishmael is one of those guys, and he's, he, he watched, he learned, he understands what we're doing now. And, uh, and like I said, there's no looking back. Ishmael is your number two tackler. Khalil Hodgman, a linebacker, is your number one tackler. Your outside linebacker, Jared Franklin, is your number three tackler. As a whole, as a group, assess w the good things that the linebacking unit has done so far. Well, we, we talked a little bit about Ishmael there as well. I think the other two have done a great job as well, learning and understanding what our 4 3 defense is about and, and getting lined up correctly, knowing the checks, recognizing things, and then going out and making plays. And to have three new starters this year making that type of progress this quickly is definitely a plus for us. It, did that come faster than maybe even you would have expected with essentially three new starters? Yes. Uh, you know, Jared's one of those that, you know, being in the program, we've talked about him and not really knowing what we missed last year without him on the field was one thing. But, you know, Khalil just joining us in January, watching him progress the way, way he has, and again, Ishmael's development is, is, you know, really to me, I, you know, I'm so proud of what he's been able to do so fast and the confidence that he's playing with. I think you have already recognized that the MAC tends to be an offensive oriented conference, but here comes your team playing defense at a very high level. How much, because it's somewhat of an outlier in the rest of the teams, how much yep. can that help you? Well, it's going to help us now, especially because we are struggling offensively and, and getting things going and so many new bodies there that are, are, are learning on, on the job. So it is big. You're keeping games close and, and doing things and we've always been firm believers uh, that, that if you're going to win championships you got to do it with excellence defense. All right well coach good luck later today should be a fun start to the Mid-American Conference schedule. The Bulls and the Kent State Golden Flashes always seem to play exciting down to the end games maybe it won't be so close for, for your sake but we'll see how it shakes out. Well thanks appreciate it Paul. Don't forget it's a 3.30 kickoff later today here at UB Stadium Stampede Square gets started with the Eddie Muddy concert at 1.30 and of course we want to remind you that if you're ready to start thinking about basketball Bulls Madness begins this coming Friday at 7 o'clock here at Alumni Arena as both the defending men's and women's Mid-American Conference Championship teams take the court for the first time. Well, coming up next on UB Football Insider, we'll dig deep into the game day experience. That is next. Country music duo Brothers Osborne will take the stage inside Stampede Square on Saturday, October 15th. Then stay a little longer and catch the UB football team as they're set to host Ball State. Presented by game day sponsor Tim Hortons. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m., but the fun starts at 12.30 p.m. It's a fun-filled day the whole family is sure to enjoy. For tickets, call 877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. Love it. It's a perfect day. Absolutely gorgeous. Here we are, ready to make some noise and have a good game. Go Bulls! It's a great place to be. A lot of fun out here in the sun. Enjoy some good music. Bring the kids out. Let them run around and uh, get ready to cheer on the Bulls towards a victory. A lot of people here too like the, the whole UB community comes out and supports the team and it's gonna be a good one. I feel like it's the pride of Buffalo so it's a good time. We were just at the concert over there it was awesome there's a lot of families and everything. You know it's always good you know when I'm not you know in season that much or playing games to come out here and support the football team. Definitely hanging out with the people that you see every day you know, they're there whether you lose or not. So, you know, it's always good to come out here and hang out with them. The 
students are coming out, the families are coming out, people are coming out to just enjoy a beautiful day here in Buffalo. Come out, enjoy some football, enjoy the university, and support our local team. With today's game against Kent State, the Bulls begin Mid-American Conference play. They're one of the last teams on campus to start MAC action. So let's check in on the rest of the fall sports. The men's soccer team is putting together one of the best seasons in program history with an 8-2-1 record through non-conference play. With wins over Canisius, Niagara, and St. Bonaventure, the Bulls retained the Big Four shield for the second straight year. Senior midfielder Russell Ciceroni has led the way as he tops the nation in goals with 11 and points with 29. The Bulls have excelled defensively as well. Goalkeeper Joseph Kuda has recorded seven shutouts in the first 11 games of the year. As always, UB women's soccer continues to be a force on their home field. Through the first two weeks of conference play, their home record stands at 5-0-1, making UB Stadium one of the toughest places to play in the MAC. Sophomore Carissa McCatrona leads the team with seven goals and 14 points, while goalkeeper Laura Dougal continues to dominate between the pipes with 43 saves and four total shutouts. Volleyball has begun conference play and ended its 16-match road trip last Thursday with a 3-2 win at Akron. Junior middle blocker Cassie Shadow had a career night against the Zips with 22 kills and just one error. Following her performance this past weekend, she was named MAC East Offensive Player of the Week. And fellow middle Megan Wernett leads the team in blocks, already surpassing her blocking total from her entire freshman year. The team is currently in a stretch of eight of 10 matches at home inside Alumni Arena. And Buffalo's cross country teams are seeing a lot of success this year on the courses. Freshman Stephanie Ward has been a driving force for the Bulls, being the first female bull to cross the finish line in all three races of the 2016 season. And for the men, Andrew Berger has been the first bull to cross the finish line in both races this year. He has the fourth fastest time in program history at the Lee high Paul Short Invitational, clocking in at 24 minutes and 39 seconds. While the fall sports are rolling, it's also time to get started with the winter sports. That means the men's and women's basketball teams have begun practice as they both defend their Mid-American Conference Championships. Let's check in with head coaches Nate Oates and Felicia Leggett-Jack. Our returners are giving us good leadership, you know, CJ and Nick and William Blake are all stepping up, being being leaders like we need them to be, and then I think we're going to get some some good play out of some of the newcomers. All the coaches have been antsy to get after it, so it's good. I, I like our team, I like our camaraderie, I like our energy together. I think I think we got a chance to really grow, and I think we got a chance to be really good again this year. I like the fact that they were so high that I had to keep bringing them down. You know, it's, if you look back in four years ago when we first got here just trying to dial them up, trying to get them to have energy, trying to have, have, get them to have passion. I didn't have to go through that today. I just had to bring them down, and that's a great problem for a head coach. We're playing to tell our story, and that will never change, and we'll always stay hungry for the story that we need to tell individually and collectively. Your first chance to see this year's Bulls come on Friday night. It's Bulls Madness, the official start to the basketball season. It all gets going at 7 o'clock here at Alumni Arena as we celebrate the defending Mid-American Conference men's and women's champions. Much more to come right here on UB Football Insider. The University at Buffalo is as much a way as it is a place of seeing the world, of engaging ideas, of inspiring action and taking the lead with people from all over, working together, lifting each other up and accomplishing amazing things. Here is how. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. With today's game against Kent State, the Bulls are the last team in the MAC to begin conference play. Everybody else already started a week ago. So let's take a trip around the MAC. 
It was a Mac East rivalry game in Oxford, Ohio. They call it the Battle of the Bricks, and it was the visiting Ohio Bobcats defeating the host Miami Red Hawks 17-7. The Bulls will travel to face the Bobcats on November 3rd. You can watch the 6 o'clock kickoff on the CBS Sports Network, and the Red Hawks come to UB Stadium on November 12th in what will be the Bulls' final home game of the season. Over in Muncie, Indiana, it was a Mac West battle between two more future opponents. The Northern Illinois Huskies got their first win of the season with a 31-24 victory over Ball State. The Cardinals come to UB Stadium next Saturday for a matchup with the Bulls. One week after that, the Bulls travel to DeKalb, Illinois to face the Huskies. And the Akron Zips improved to 3-2 and two with a thrilling 31-27 win over Kent State in the Wagon Wheel game. Michael Trailer Bennett's three-yard touchdown run with 20 seconds remaining sealed the victory for the Zips. The Bulls kick off conference play against the Golden Flashes today at 3.30, and they'll host the Zips later this month on October 27th. That game is part of midweek Maction. In last week's game against the Boston College Eagles, the Bulls had 10 tackles for loss, the most by a UB defense in over two years. So as part of this week's Karuba collisions, let's see which ones stood out. Here are this week's Karuba collisions. Second down and short, Hilleman in the running spot, grabbed in the backfield and brought down by Brandon Crawford, who continues his outstanding play. One yard loss back to the 35. Tolls in the shotgun, gets the snap, stands in the pocket, gets pressured, hit, balls loose. It's a fumble. Who's got the football? Bubble has a scramble. Called. And the Bulls have recovered at the 10 yard line. A sack for the Bulls defense and a fumble recovery, and it's first and goal from the 10 for the Buffalo offense. Tolls empty backfield for third down, gets the shotgun snap, steps up in the pocket, hits sack, fumble. fumble. Bulls are trying to fall on the football, and I believe they did. It'll be another sack for Buffalo. I believe it was Charles Harris around the end, and the recovery to Brandon Crawford of the Bulls. That's another turnover for this Buffalo defense. Go to ubbulls.com now to vote for your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Big week ahead here at UB. Of course, Bulls Madness as we celebrate the basketball team's Mid-American Conference Championship comes up on Friday at 7 o'clock here at Alumni Arena. And of course, later today, Mid-American Conference starts. In a lot of ways, the season begins now for the Bulls when they take on Kent State at 3.30 at UB Stadium. All the fun gets going at 1.30 when the legendary Eddie Money takes the Stampede Square concert stage. Let's hope that Eddie can inspire the Bulls to take us home tonight with a victory. We'll see you next week on UB Football Insider.